Welcome to Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and when I'm not researching the Civil War, I research the history of domesticated animals because that firmly links humans with the natural world. The use of horses, cows, sheep, and other barnyard animals toward our own economy, society, culture, and daily lives changed throughout the centuries, and none more than the horse, when the horseless carriage or automobile was created. So I thought a video talking about the transition and the major effects it had on the urban economy would make an interesting video. Horses powered cities pulling bus-like vehicles carrying workers from place to place inside the city. People rode in carriages or simply on horseback and city stables were constantly filled with mounts for city use and for rent. However, with horses came manure and a lot of manure. The United States had an average urban density in 1900 of 446 horses per square mile. Horses could generate as much as five tons of manure per square mile per day. The city of Philadelphia with 129 square miles and a horse density of 394 in each received 500 tons per day. When it rained, the streets would be turned into swamps of excrement with a putrid smell and when overly dry would churn up in dust clouds and fly into the mouths of city inhabitants. One New Yorker grumbled, no one can cross Broadway but on tiptoe. Ladies can only wishfully cast their eyes from one side to the other if they have any regard for their clothes, will not venture further. Indeed, no pleasure carriage can drive the length of the street without being covered with mud so as to require washing before it can be used a second time. Armies of street sweepers strove in vain many times to keep up with the animals and the day-to-day -day trash and human filth they were supposed to carry away. One of the repeated complaints leveled against street cleaning, both public and private, was that trash collectors or scavengers, as they were commonly called, would pick and choose among the rubbish, leaving much of it behind. Collectors frequently passed over dead cats and rats to the dismay of many New Yorkers. Scavengers were so selective because there was a huge market among the regional farmers for the city's street manure. The very fact that the city could profit from its waste convinced critics that the publicly run option might not be much of a drain on the city's coffers as many had feared. In the eyes of both politicians and entrepreneurs, the piles of horse waste might as well have been piles of gold. Farmers just outside the city paid good prices for the horse waste to be used as fertilizer for their fields in order to grow corn, potatoes, beans, and other vegetables, which in turn they sold to urban dwellers in this cyclical relationship between city and country. Farmers could obtain a cartload of manure for about 30 cents. One of the biggest commodities that farmers sold to urbanites was hay, it of course being the fuel source for horses which powered streetcars, freight carriers, and general transportation. Farmers were not the only ones benefiting from this relationship. In 1830, the New York City government raked in $19,000 for its street scrapings, which amounted to nearly 75% of the entire cost of cleaning the streets. During a time when the street cleaning accounted for one of the city government's largest expenses, the ability to offset a major portion of the cost was not only good for the budget, but also good for politics. By keeping the net cost down, the city tempered some of the criticism thrown its way. Manure ranked in as one of the most profitable ventures alongside taxes, tavern licenses, and the public sale of property. Being able to nearly pay for itself, street sweeping as a public service within the city became more acceptable. Horse manure became so important and city officials realized the need to keep farmers happy. The city aldermen appointed manure inspectors in order to make sure that manure was kept separate from human refuse and trash like old shoes, sticks, and regular garbage. However, by the late 1800s, urban populations swelled as a result of migration from rural areas and immigration from abroad. Industrial production concentrated in urban areas. Sanitary, transportation, and housing infrastructures were strained to the breaking point. Political institutions seemed unable and unwilling to provide solutions. Continued labor and political agitation was highlighted by incidents 
such as the Haymarket bombings in Chicago. The moneyed classes, fearful of revolution, built armories and organized private militias. In the 1890s, immigration intensified, and the newcomers seemed more alien. There were significant outbreaks of disorder among the homestead and Pullman strikes and agrarian issues, and the worst depression in national history to date. This agitation led urban dwellers to look for a way to end the social decay infecting their cities. These social reformers would attack the physical dirt and filth they observed every day in the cities in an attempt to make the world physically more pleasing, which would lead to an improvement in society. Their sanitation efforts attacked horse manure, seeing it as one of the big problems, especially since germ theory was in its infancy. They saw manure as spreaders of disease and sought to end the use of animals in the city. The rapid introduction of electricity and the invention of the horseless carriage, later to be known as the automobile, became their solution for getting rid of city animals. Not knowing the effects of pollution associated with the internal combustion engine, they touted vehicles as the best way to clean up the city. An early magazine dedicated to the horseless carriage called Horseless Age constantly criticized the use of animals for transportation purposes. As Horseless Age railed against horses and their drivers, it also railed against suggestions of regulations, speed limits, or licensing requirements for motorists. It was horses and their drivers who posed danger, not the automobiles and their drivers, they commented. An editorial attacked the motophobia of the city of Chicago for requiring that drivers be licensed and demand to know why horse drivers were not licensed. Eventually, the automobile and subways would take over where the horses had been just 30 or 40 years earlier. But this conversion from horse to engine impacted the lives of the farmers outside the city. Some farmers found themselves in desperate need for fertilizer, which forced them to pay sometimes much higher prices for commercial fertilizer, putting some of those farmers out of business. Some moved to the Midwest where more land was available in order for them to grow more crops and get a higher yield in order to offset the cost of fertilizer. When we think of the transition from horse to car, we hardly think of the economic implications it had for farmers, who in many cases depended on the manure produced from horses to grow their crops on land, which without the manure would lack significant nutrients. The cyclical life of manure in 19th century America was what helped give rise to these major cities and allow them to thrive. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this dive into urban and environmental history. Please share the video to get the word out about the channel. Thank you all again and have a nice day.